All right, I'll give you guys two different examples. In this case, I have y equals negative log base 3 of x plus 2. Okay? Now, automatically, you guys can look at this and go back through your transformations. y equals a log base b of x uh, minus h plus k. From looking at our general forms of our transformations, we know that our a is negative. So therefore, we're going to have a reflection over our x-axis. And we're going to shift up two units. Yes? We need to make sure we're really, really good with our transformations. Doesn't matter if it's exponential, logarithmic, or quadratic. You need to know what the transformations mean, right? So we write them down. OK. Um, so, so now those are our transformations. Now to apply transformations, I want to be able to graph. I need to be able to graph what we call our parent function. All right. Now the parent function is going to be the function with without any transformations or shifting or reflections. So our parent function, in this case, is just going to be y equals log base 3 of x. We will add the reflection, and we will add the shift in a second. That is just the parent graph right there. There's no negative? That we're going to add the transformations in a second. Yeah, we just want to take the bait. We just want to be able to find this. So there's a couple things that are important. All logarithms had exactly what was their y, what was their y intercept. Well, they didn't have a y intercept, right? They now have a x intercept. And the x intercept was what? 1 comma 0. All logarithmic equations, before we get to transformations, have an x intercept at 1 comma 0. Now what I'd like you guys to do is at least be able to apply another point. Okay? At least try to get another point in for there that you'll be able to um, plug in. So let's plug in 2. So if I said y equals log base 3 of 2, or um, let's, do, let's do 9, because I know it's going to be a little bit simpler. Right? So if I say 9, how are you going to do that? Well, if I want to use an xy table, right? Just, you just need two points, x and y. We already know that at, at x equals 1, y equals 0. What about when x equals 2? Or I'm sorry, at 9. What about when x equals 9? Well, how can we figure out what y is from here? We can rewrite it in exponential form. 3 weight raised to the y power equals 9. So it is 3. Oh, no, it's 2. You multiply 3 times 3, but the raised to the exponent is 2, right? So therefore, there's another point. I have 1 comma 0. And I have 9 comma 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. OK, so that's what the graph looks like right now. That's before transformations. We haven't done any transformations yet. So now our transformations are to reflect over the y x-axis, I'm sorry, over the x-axis and then to shift the graph two units up. So let's do the shifting two units up. Instead of it being at 1, 0, now it's going to be at 2, 0. And instead of being at, so this is at 1, 0, and this is at 9, 2. So instead of the point being at 9, 2, now if I shift the graph two units up, it's now at 9, 4. Right? But remember, ladies and gentlemen, we still have to do the reflection. Yes? So you could say, oh, well, that's the graph when it's shifted up. But now I need to reflect it over the x-axis. So whatever you have here, you just take a mirror image and reflect it below. So instead of going over 1, up 2, I'm not going to go over 1, down 2. And instead of giving over 9, up 4, I'm not going to go over 9, down 4. So now. By taking this graph and reflecting it, I know the shape of the graph is going to look something like that. All right, So that's how we use our transformations to be able to graph it. Now, when graphing, though, we also have to be able to determine what is our asymptote. Okay, The asymptote here, the asymptote of this equation, remember, is when x equals 0. Well, did I shift the graph left or right at all? No. So guess what? The asymptote remains the same. All right. 
Then remember the domain of the parent graph here is from 0 to infinity. That was in your notes for the parent graph. Well, now my domain, it's still going to be the same. I haven't changed it left or right. So domain is going to be from 0 to infinity. But the range is dependent on where the, um, yeah, the range is going to be not dependent on the asymptote at all. So that's going to be negative infinity to infinity. And the range over here is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. OK, so that's a rough approximation of your graph and how to use it. OK? I think I figured out what I need. I don't have enough.